Hello and welcome to Spotlight on Middlesex County, where we share the latest news on events, services, and programs throughout the county. I'm your host, Middlesex County Board of County Commissioners Director Ron Rios, and I'm glad you could join me. In this month's episode, we'll be speaking with Deputy Fire Marshal Kyle Toth. Kyle is going to share some tips regarding fire safety around the holidays. We're here at the Middlesex County Fire Academy, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome Kyle to Spotlight. What sort of things does the Office of the Fire Marshal do, if you could explain to our audience? The Office of the Fire Marshal is a multifaceted office within the county. We have everything from fire prevention inspections, fire investigations, as well as coordinate with all mutual aid within the county of the 25 municipalities. What can you tell us about your role as a Deputy Fire Marshal for Middlesex County? My role as Deputy Fire Marshal is ever-changing every day. We can be conducting fire prevention inspections in the morning, conducting a fire investigation in the afternoon, and changes a little bit every day. Let's talk a little bit about fire safety during the holidays, especially this holiday season coming up. There's uh, typically lots of cooking and family gatherings, extra lights, trees inside the houses uh, at this time of the year, and certainly pl plenty of chances for something to go wrong. Maybe you can explain to our audience. It's definitely, Mr. Rios, with the, all the new decorations and the lights on the trees, there always is a chance for something to go wrong. The best that we can do is for everything to go safe and follow manufacturer's instructions with all the products you use. What's a common mistake people make that increases the risk of a fire around the holidays? One of the most common problems we see in the county is definitely the overloading of sockets with decorative lights, whether it's Christmas lights, Halloween lights, whatever it may be, adding many strands of lights into one outlet commonly causes a problem and can cause a fire. And what's the easiest thing that people can do to reduce the risk of something going wrong during the holidays? The easiest thing is just follow the manufacturer's instructions. If they says keep one strand of lights to one outlet, keep one strand of lights to one outlet and properly install them as you go. Can you share any kind of safety tips about Christmas trees? Of course. In the holiday season, almost 25% of fires, according to the National Fire Protection Agency, are caused by dry Christmas trees. Keep your tree well watered. If it is a, a real tree, if it's an artificial tree, follow the manufacturer's instructions regarding fire protection. And how can people check their lights to make sure they're safe before hanging them outside or inside uh, in the home? The best thing to do is to lay out the lights before you put them up, test out all the bulbs and everything with them, and make sure to check that all the protective covering is there over the wire. What's the most uh, common uh, calls that fire departments get uh, in Middlesex County during the, the fires, uh, the, during the holiday season? During the holiday season, cooking fires are definitely the most. Everyone's together, everyone's cooking, and it is common that a cooking fire can happen. And of course, we always want people to cook to make our holidays a little, of course, a little better. But uh, what's the uh, most unusual holiday related fire call that you've responded to? And I'm sure you have plenty. <laughs> uh, I think a Christmas light, Christmas light on fire it happened last year in the county somewhere, one of our municipalities. And uh, one of the Christmas lights did cause a fire to the person's home on Christmas Eve of last year. Oh. And the cold temperatures uh, this time of the year have people reaching for their thermostats. And uh, as people start restarting their heating systems in their house, is there any kind of uh, safety tips or checks that you recommend that people should do? Of course, the best thing we could recommend is to have all your vents and ducts cleaned prior to turn that heat on, maybe every, maybe sometime once a year in between turning it off in the spring and turning it on in the wintertime, we have those ducts cleaned by a professional to make sure there's no dust accumulation, dirt accumulation, anything that can start a fire. I'm not a fan of, of uh, space heaters because I've heard so many horror stories yeah. with them. So I don't have any in my house, but I'm sure there's people that use them. Maybe you can give uh, our viewers a little tips, a few tips on what they should do with space heaters. Of course, we don't recommend the use of space heater, but if you do use a space heater in your home, make sure it's in a well air, area well spread out, nothing near any combustibles, anything that can burn, and to make sure before you go to bed or leave the area, the space heater's turned off. And a lot of times people put them right under a window. 
Yep. And people have their curtains up. Yes, sir. And and you know, I, I mean, that's that's a concern. That's a concern of mine all of the course. time, and that's why I don't have any uh, space heaters in my house because I just just don't want to have that risk. Yeah, there's many past fires from them, and like you said, we make sure everyone's safe as we can. And uh, obviously, we've had some crazy storms lately in, in New Jersey and throughout the country as well. And here in Middlesex County, you know, we didn't go unscathed with storms. And uh, maybe what can you maybe you can give our, our viewers some tips uh, on fire safety, uh, you know, who may rely on generators because sometimes they can, you know, the intent is great of to course. give us power, but some people may not be using them right. Maybe you can give our audience a few tips on how to use them properly. Of course, if you do unfortunately have to use a generator due to the loss of power or whatever the reasoning is for it, the best thing we recommend is to use the generator outside in a well-vented area, not near your home and not overloaded. If you, every generator is designed for a perfect, for a use, stay within that use. And like you said earlier, you know, you said, mentioned about lights, read the manufacturer's instructions yes, and safety sir. tips and warnings. And the same thing with generators as well. Yes, sir. The generators all will produce carbon monoxide. The best thing we recommend is always having a carbon monoxide alarm in your home on the multiple levels. And if you are using a generator, do not put one inside of your home because it can produce carbon monoxide, which is an odorless, tasteless gas that can unfortunately harm and kill people. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for joining me today on Spotlight in Middlesex County. And I'm sure these, uh, this discussion that we had and, and your safety tips will certainly provide some uh, good, positive information for our viewers. Thank you, sir, for having me. Middlesex County officially launched its Latino telehealth pilot program in mid-October. This new community-based program is designed to increase the use of telehealth services within the Latino community and expand healthcare access to uninsured and underinsured communities. The county has partnered with local organizations and healthcare providers in Carteret, Perth Amboy, and New Brunswick in order to ensure that all healthcare options are safe, confidential, and HIPAA compliant. To maximize access to healthcare, the Latino Telehealth Pilot Program will also provide physical locations or hubs offering free internet, tech assistance, and bilingual staff and translators to assist the community. The program's first hub is located at Raritan Bay YMCA in Perth Amboy. Middlesex County will eventually expand the Latino Telehealth Pilot Program to Carteret and New Brunswick. For more information about the county's Latino Telehealth Pilot Program, please visit middlesexcountynj.gov forward slash telehealth. The county recently announced plans to transform the site of a Middlesex County Department of Public Works garage located on Fayette Street in Perth Amboy into a pocket park. Pocket parks are little pockets of green space that brighten up neighborhoods and can be enjoyed by anyone. The new park will not be an official Middlesex County park, but the county will be involved in every phase of the project, working closely with the city of Perth Amboy. After the Public Works garage is demolished, the design and permitting phase will begin. That will take approximately two years and then the county will begin building the park. In late October, Middlesex County hosted its fifth annual business summit, leading with a purpose. The business summit brought together a panel of future-minded leaders from around the nation and across industry sectors to discuss how businesses are thinking beyond profitability to focus on creating value for all of their stakeholders. Cordell Carter, Executive Director of the Aspen Institute, served as moderator for the event. Panelists included Lou Cooperhouse, President and CEO of Blue Nalu Incorporated, Monique Carswell, Director of the Center for Racial Equality at the Walmart Foundation, Jean Gurevich, Director of Policy and Business Development at Mobileye, Natalie Madiera Cofield, Assistant Administrator of the Office of Women's Business Ownership at the U.S. Small Business Administration, and Sandy S. Castor, Director of the Middlesex County Office of Business Engagement. During the discussion, the panelists shared how their organizations are addressing the challenges of the present and future, and how innovative decision-making is having a positive impact on their companies, workers, communities, and the world. The Business Summit also included breakout sessions focused on specific topics. 
Hosted by the panelists, these breakout sessions provide an opportunity for more in-depth conversation between the panelists and attendees. This December, Plays in the Park is returning to the newly renovated State Theater on Livingston Avenue in New Brunswick for Middlesex County's annual tradition of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. You can buy tickets online anytime at the State Theater website or by phone Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 732-246-7469. The State Theater Lobby is also open to purchase tickets in person from noon to 4.30 p.m. Tuesday through Friday. Performance dates are Sunday, December 26th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., Monday, December 27th at 7 p.m., and Tuesday, December 28th at 7 p.m. Food insecurity is a real problem in our country, our state, and right here in Middlesex County. To combat this issue, Replenish, formerly known as McFoods, collects and distributes food and basic necessities to a network of more than 140 partner organizations throughout Middlesex County. For the second year in a row, Replenish is recognizing some of their most dedicated volunteers and contributors with the Hunger Heroes Awards. In this video, you'll hear directly from the 2021 Hunger Heroes honorees about the work they do and why it is important to them. Take a look. Hello, my name is Betty Cruz, and I'm a volunteer and associate manager at Peter's Pantry in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. Peter's Pantry is one of many food pantries that serve the people of Perth Amboy. Our pantry has been in existence for over 10 years, and I have been a volunteer at the pantry from the first day it opened. Every week, volunteers from Peter's Pantry travel to replenish in East Brunswick to pick up food and supplies that are instrumental to keeping our pantry functioning. Without the help of Replenish and Feeding Middlesex County, we would struggle to meet the needs of the people that come to Peter's Pantry on a weekly basis. Because of COVID, we had to reduce our schedule from twice a week to once per week. But by the grace of God and Replenish, our pantry remains open and we continue to serve the people of Perth Amboy. I have been retired for 19 years and I spend my time getting to know my community by being involved in many volunteer organizations. I have been a member of the Royal Garden Club for over 20 years, and we plant and maintain many flower gardens throughout the city of Perth Amboy. This gives me great pleasure while also helping to beautify the city. Peter's Pantry also has a vegetable garden that supplies fresh vegetables to our pantry clients. This too brings much satisfaction to my life, especially when the fruits of my labor produce a great crop. I also belong to several organizations that work to make Perth Amboy a better place for all its people. I am a civic trustee and a member of the Green Team and the Stormwater Infrastructure Management Team. I continue to volunteer because it fills my life with positive things while giving me great pleasure. I am truly blessed to be able to do this. I give thanks to Replenish and all organizations that work hard to end hunger for many, many people throughout Middlesex County. I am so appreciative and honored to be awarded the Tom Ellison Hunger Hero Food Pantry Volunteer Award. And thank you to the family of Tom Ellison for thinking me worthy of this award. I accept this award for all the volunteers at Peter's Pantry who give so graciously of their time and talents. Thank you, Replenish. Thank you, Feeding Middlesex County, and thank you to the Ellison family. Hi, my name is Brian Fitzpatrick, and I'm a district sales manager with Liberty Coca-Cola Beverages. And for the past 13 years, I've been working with a local church and my employer, Liberty Coca-Cola Beverages, to collect and donate product for our neighbors and our community members who count on Replenish and Feeding Middlesex County for support. What started is me trying to help my mother by donating extra product from our warehouse turned into regular donations and organized volunteer events. And I've enjoyed the work every step of the way. I'm very fortunate that I do not have to worry about where my next meal is gonna come from or whether I have a roof over my head. And when I started volunteering with my mother at the church and seeing the real need the people in our community have, I just wanted to do something to take away their worry. And that's why I continue to do the work that I do. 
I'm thankful that I work with an organization and leaders who want to make that impact too. Again, there's a real need in our community and Replenish is making sure our neighbors who need our help and our extra support receive it. I'm grateful to them for leading this work and the fact that they've been able to help me distribute more than 400,000 pounds of product over the years is remarkable. This recognition really means a lot and it points back to my family and to my company and it validates the work they've been helping me do for over 13 years. And I hope this helps raise even more awareness that there's people in our community who need our support. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Isabel Goldman. I live in Monroe Township. I have been a volunteer at Replenish MC Foods since 2019, working in the East Brunswick Distribution Center to help sort and bag foods for distribution to local pantries. The COVID-19 pandemic has worsened the food crisis in our community. Many people have lost their jobs and have fewer opportunities to work increasing food insecurity. At the same time, social, distancing, social distancing requirements to keep us safe meant that volunteers were not able to work in the East Brunswick facility. In the interim, I have been delivering prepared food to the elderly, Meals on Meals. People tell me I'm a pretty good painter, especially of landscapes and nature scenes. So I use this passion to work with Replenish MC Foods. I have been offering to commission my artwork in exchange for a donation to Replenish MC Foods. With 100% of the proceeds going to the organization, other than a nominal charge for the canvas and oil paints. So far, my paintings have raised $1,300. It feels great to be volunteering and doing something I enjoy and do good for Middlesex County at the same time. Of course, I am looking forward to one day returning to the distribution center as a volunteer but I also plan to continue to offer my artwork to raise even more money from now till the end of the year and going forward. By the way, if you'd like to consider purchasing an oil painting in exchange for a tax deductible donation, you can contact me by email at bellg61 at gmail.com. That's B-E-L-L-E-G 61 at gmail.com. I will send you a portfolio of all my artwork to choose from along with the pricing. Or if your walls are already filled, just go to MC Foods website to make a monetary donation or find other ways in which to help the needy. This pandemic has tested the mental health of all of us. I can tell you that giving of yourself or your money is one prescription that helps. I'm so pleased and honored to receive this honorary award because I hope that it will inspire others to act. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that it will inspire you to help the needy. Have a wonderful day. Hello everybody, my name is Keith Jones. I am the Director of Human and Community Services for the City of New Brunswick. I've worked with Replenish for the past several years and the work that you do for all of Middlesex County residents is truly amazing and should be commended daily. Today, I have the pleasure of receiving and honor the Hunger Hero Governance Award for 2021 for a man that I consider a brother and a friend as well as you do, and one of our biggest heroes in Middlesex County who's no longer with us and left us way too soon, Deputy Director Kenneth Hongwell. Ken uh, devoted his life uh, to serving others in food security, for all was one of his biggest passions, whether that was showing up at a food drive or a food pantry, just to make sure that residents saw and felt his presence as well as his compassion for them. Um, if Kim was here right now, we will be thanking you for the work that you do as, as opposed to receiving an award uh, for uh, the work that he loved and gave his life for. Uh, so on behalf of Ken, uh, I say thank you, and again, thank you for all the work 
and the service that you provide to all of the residents of Middlesex County. Thank you. Congratulations to the 2021 Hunger Heroes. Thank you for all you do in partnership with Replenish to help combat food insecurity in Middlesex County. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. That's everything we have for this episode. My thanks again to Middlesex County Deputy Fire Marshal Kyle Toth for joining me today and to the Middlesex County Fire Academy for hosting us. Fire safety is always important, but as we learned today, it's especially crucial to take the fire safety seriously at this time of year. Thank you for watching this month's episode of Spotlight on Middlesex County. As always, more information about the topics we discussed today can be found on our website at www.middlesexcountynj.gov. On behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, I hope that you and your family are staying safe and healthy Please continue to follow all safety recommendations regarding COVID-19. Have a safe and happy holiday season. We'll see you next month with another episode of Spotlight on Middlesex County. <music> <laughs>